Hi guys, I found here and today I'm going to be doing my round 10 review. So I scored 1,988, which was pretty awful in the top 12%, but somehow I still went up in the ranks 471. So now my season rank is 12,376, and I'm in the top 7% overall. So obviously not a very good round, but I think we had a fair few players um, out because of the bye. So not too bad. But let's get into the team. So, if you didn't know, like, I've had a few comments and stuff from my last video, which have basically said that they want to continue on with, like, the new thing that I'm doing. So, instead of going from the defenders to the forwards, I'm going to do it game by game, and then do a watch list, and then do the trades. So, again, if you like that, comment again, and if you don't like it, also comment. So, let's start off with the first game, Port Adelaide vs Western Bulldogs. So, Port were very impressive, overcoming a half-time deficit to win by 13 points. This win was important to Port Adelaide, as if they want to be top four side, they have to overcome these middle-of-the-road teams. The game was won in the Premiership quarter, the power kicked four goals to zero in that quarter. Okay, so my players from this game, McRae 114, really good from him, everyone should have him. Um, Bay Smith, 88, still a little bit disappointing, but not too bad. George Yardy scored 64, which is alright. Now to the next game, Richmond versus Brisbane. Richmond dominated the contest as a result of the two key forwards, Rewalt and Lynch, dominating. So they ended up winning by 41 points. This was also helped by the um, Brisbane's really inaccurate goal kicking of four goals, 17. So my players for this game were Neil, who had 149, really good, chucked the captain on him, although I wish I'd done it on Oliver, but still wasn't a bad option. Pickett scored 68, which is pretty good. He'll still be going up a bit more after, I think he scored 100 or something last week. And then Martin, 111. As I keep on saying, he's back to his best. Um, really good pick. So Geelong versus North Melbourne. So Geelong cruised to a 33 point victory, although it could have been more as they were very inaccurate scoring 13 goals 12. The Cats were simply another level as they sent the Roos crashing back to earth. Myers was a standout performer with four goals. So this one I bought in Stewart, which at the time seemed a really good option. And I still think it's alright, but 68 was a really poor score. It's just lucky that he had a really low break even, so he still went up. But yeah, 68 is really bad, but I'll keep him. Hopefully that's just an outlier. Simpson scored 72, showing that he still has a lot of potential to go up in price and earn a lot more money. And Close scored 31, but he should still be going up in price anyway. Okay, so next game, Melbourne versus Adelaide. So an inexperienced Adelaide side with countless players under 20 games fought valiantly for the first three quarters, trailing by just 12 at three quarter time. However, in the last quarter, these went to the next level, scoring seven goals to one to come out 51 point winners. This was mainly thanks to Clayton Oliver, who impressed with 34 disposals, and to a lot of critics' surprise, was actually very damaging with a ball in hand, with a kicking efficiency of 74%. So my players in this game, Hamill scored four, got injured. I think I'll have to trade him out. He's just scored a lot of low scores um, and his break is like 100 or something at the moment. And I just don't really want to keep him in. Um, Oliver, 205, excellent, should have captained him though. Benel, 42. Um, Probably not going to keep him, his break even's catching up with him. He doesn't really have much more cash to earn. Gorn, 107. Um, not bad, but not great. Petrarca, 132. Um, really excellent performance. Um, yeah, he's done really well for me this season. So, Collingwood versus Sydney. So, Sydney looked to cause a huge upset, upset staying in touch and leading for periods of the match as a result of extremely poor goal kicking from Collingwood, who 
who finished with 6 goals, 14 behinds, including a first quarter where they scored just 6 behinds. However, a brilliant goal from Dacos at the 23 minute mark of the final quarter won them the game. Okay, so the players for this game, Crisp81, um, very disappointing. I thought he was going to be a really good pod, but obviously not. Um, I still think we keep him for a bit longer because um, I do believe he can do really well. Um, but Noble 64, um, basically same situation as Pickett. He scored like 100 last week, so he'll still be going up. Um, so Grundy 147, um, back to his best after a disappointing week last week. And Bell, I mean, I just traded him in because I want someone cheap who was still playing. So 45 honestly isn't that bad. Okay. So Gold Coast versus St Kilda. So this game was um, was also a hard fought contest with both teams scoring quickly causing um, the worm to dramatically swing throughout the match. However, a brilliant running goal from Butler sealed it at the 20 minute mark of the final quarter. So my plays from this game, Butterick, um, who scored 55, which is a right. I think he's still going up, I'm not completely sure. And Rankin, 83, was really good. Took a really good mark and a goal in the dying stages, but obviously couldn't win it for them. And on to the next game. Sorry, I haven't, I'm not sure it might have deleted or something, but I don't have the scores right on the notes section if you can see where I'm reading all of this from. But anyway, I'll review the game. So Essendon set themselves in the second quarter, scoring six goals to two, and I thought I'd tipped a winner. However, they scored just two goals for the rest of the match, allowing GWS to come back and eventually win, thanks to a Callum Ward flop in the dying moments. So my players from this game, um, Ridley, he scored 101. Um, definitely what I'm looking for from him. Uh, yeah, just a very good match. And then, who else have we got? I think Whitfield as well um, was very good, 131. And Draper, 74, was actually excellent considering, I think, after the first quarter, he had like negative one points. So basically, that's my team. Um, the watch list, I'm not going to go into detail about this because I've already explained over all of these players. It's just that last week's watch list was exactly the same, apart from... Duncan and Stuart, who I also had on. And basically this week, the only real difference, like Fife had a buy, Lloyd is still going huge, but Simpkin, um, he actually scored decent again and went down a lot in value, so I really think um, I should be looking to get him in this round, which leads us, leads us into the trades where we are going to get him. So we need to downgrade some rookies first. So Harley Bennell, I think we can get out because obviously he's been underperforming and Hamill as well. I just don't want any of those scores in the teens from him because um, they've really been letting my team down. So anyway, I'll just get someone to downgrade real quick. Usually I would go with someone who's like one or two, but since this person has to be in my back line, um, and I've already got Rivers not playing. I'd just like to have someone who is playing. So I'll get Shoal, I think it is, um, from Adelaide, who played pretty well in his debut. Um, and then, obviously, I want to get in Simkin. I'm going to have to swap Bell to the midfield and get in Simkin. And as you can see, that's his price is tiny he went down almost 30,000 last week despite scoring 103 um, and he's still averaging 96 e even with some horrible scores over the last few weeks so should probably average 100 to 110 easily and for that price he's just an absolute bargain and that's why I'm doing that trade so I'm going to complete my trades there and last of all what I want to do is a bit of like the loopholes 
I'll do that real quick after my trades. Confirm. Hope. All right, finally we're back from that. Um, obviously, I don't know, that took a long time for my trades to load. So, obviously I'll get everyone on field and then as I said, I'll show you the loopholes that I am going to be doing. So I think this was, as I said, a reason that I didn't get as many points because I did have Sicily, Doherty, Mitchell and Cripps all off the field because of buys. Which, yeah, that was the reason. There we go. So, what I want to do, let's just look here. I see Brisbane versus Western Bulldogs. Um, I either want to VC McRae or Neil. So that, I think I will go Neil. However, they are both... They are both playing against each other, so they might steal points from one another. But I don't know. Um, and then I'll probably captain Gone. So if you don't know how this loophole works, obviously, watch my other video on how it works. But basically, I'll explain it real quick. So if, um, if Neil scores really well, I can put the captain on, say, Rivers who isn't playing, and then obviously Emergency Noble, so he can still play, and then Neil will get double points, but otherwise I keep the captain on Gorn, and then Gorn will score double points. And now for like the rookie loopholes. So this one's a bit harder, the Emergency Loophole, but what you want to find is someone who's playing quite early, so... Maybe we'll say, we can, actually no, sorry, we can't emergency loophole in the midfield because we don't have anyone scoring zero. We have two people scoring zero here, so we can't emergency loophole there. But let's just see for the back line. Um, what we can do, emergency... Yeah, okay, we can't emergency loophole for the back line either. So that's a bit of a fail, but whatever. We'll just sub Noble back on. Chuck the emergency on Shoal. Emergency off Rivers. I mean, emergency on Draper, just in case Grundy will go and get rested, as I said before. I'm just waiting for this to load. Okay, whatever, it's not going to load. Just like, subscribe. Um, I'll see you in the next video.